All right, folks. Today on r slash ask reddit will uncover the jaw-dropping downfalls of the popular kids. From hamster flushing incidents to unexpected emo transformations, it's a wild roller coaster. Alrighty, let's dive in. Reddit. What made the unpopular girl or guy at school unpopular? When I was in primary school, the popular kid thought it would be funny to flush the class pet, a hamster called Nibbles, down the toilet. All the kids thought the hamster would have died and he quickly became known as the kid who killed a hamster. He ended up changing schools for another reason. By the way, the hamster survived, I don't know how pipes work, but I heard the caretaker eventually found him. The school still gave nibbles away after that. Edit. If you were wondering about the kid, he had bad ADHD or something like that, and he was transferred to a school that specialized in kids with behavioral problems. He has a stable job as a bookmaker now, but that's all I know about him. Also, Although we were told Nibbles survived, we never saw him again. All we know is that he was given away to a random family. There is a possibility the teacher made that up, as another Redditor pointed out. And Nibbles actually did perish, and they just didn't want to upset us. Ah, the legend of Nibbles, the hamster version of Finding Nemo. I hope the little buddy survived. Who would have thought the school's plumbing system was his ticket to freedom? Or at least a different family? As for our hamster-flushing popular kid... Bet he didn't realize his fast track to fame was going to be through hamster side. Guess that's a one-way ticket to kids who should probably see a therapist. So this was in the late 90s, maybe 98 or 99. We were in second grade. This kid, we'll just call him Timmy, was pretty well liked. He was a nice kid and got along with everyone pretty well. For whatever reason, the boys of my class were comparing undies on the playground like, Oh, I got Scooby-Doo or I got spaceships or whatever. Why? Couldn't tell you. Little kids are freaking weird. So Timmy was the holdout of the group. He wouldn't tug down his pants to show what prints he had. He got accused of having girly underwear and one thing led to another, culminating in a couple of boys grabbing him and pulling down his pants. And boom, it wasn't what anyone was expecting. Timmy didn't have girly undies. He had on a big old diaper. In hindsight, it made a lot of things make sense. He had carte blanche to leave class to the nurse. He wore baggy pants, and every once in a while the classroom stank of something fierce. He got teased pretty badly that day, and for a while afterwards. Though people eventually mellowed out about it, once it was no longer the new thing. The story doesn't end there, though. This was one of the earliest moments in my life that I understood what empathy was. One of my biggest childhood nightmares got presented right in front of me. I was a bedwetter. From the ages of three to around thirteen. And not just occasionally, but like every single night. So for most of that time, I had to wear something similar every night. I was terrified that someone would find out and my life would be over. I was already a little socially outcast because I was an odd kid, which only magnified my fears. To my shame, I made fun of Timmy that day and several days after. I'd call him names or tug at his waistband or whatever. It wasn't until I mentioned to my mom about him that I got an earful and a reminder that I had to wear the same thing at night. That stuck with me. And not much later than that, I apologized to him and instead tried to befriend him. I didn't have a lot of friends, and he had lost a lot of his friends as well. Funnily enough, I guess seven-year-olds don't have a strong sense of loyalty. We were pretty good friends throughout elementary school. I told him my own secret to make him feel better, and I think it did though I'm sure he was pretty pissed since I was such a dick about it at first. He was the only friend I felt completely comfortable having sleepovers with, due to our collective shame. He moved away the first year of middle school, which was a bummer, and we didn't really reconnect at all until early high school where we talked online. He never told me the exact reason that he had to wear them, or if he did, I don't remember. But it really seemed like he just couldn't control his bladder or bowels at all, so maybe he was incontinent due to a nerve injury or something. I don't know. But that's pretty much the gist of it. It seriously impacted his social life, but things certainly got better as people moved on. Ah, seems our storyteller found himself in a sticky situation, bedwetting but laughing at his fellow nappy ninja, Timmy. Guess what, buddy? The irony stinks worse than a loaded diaper. Thanks to mom's reality check, he swaps teasing for empathy. Remember, folks, we all have our diaper moments. Let's just be a bit kinder, yeah? I went to school from fourth grade to high school with a kid my age whose father was a prominent city official in our town. Even though we lived only a few blocks from one another, we were in different worlds. My background was much more blue-collar, and unfortunately I lived in an alcoholic and physically violent household. For these and other reasons I never understood, 
His mother despised me and she wanted her son to have nothing to do with me. She actually called my mother once to suggest that she keep me away from her son since our level in life was so very different. I found him smart and funny and fascinating and we palled around. He wore slacks while I wore jeans and his suede shoes were much better than my sneakers. By our high school years, he was a football letterman while I was a band geek and he was in college prep while I took vocational courses. We still knew each other, but he was on a college track and I was living day by day. As graduation approached, we learned that his parents had worked with the local congressman for his appointment to West Point. Wow. Tragically, the night of graduation, he and his girlfriend went out with him driving drunk on a country road. He hit an oak tree and she was killed. That's the last I ever heard of him. But once in a while, I Google his name just to see if he might surface somewhere. I sometimes think of how mortified his status-conscious mother must have felt and concerned about his girlfriend's family and, of course, what happened to my friend who killed someone just before his life began. I wish him well over 40 years later. I'm just not sure what happens when life seems to be laid out before you with concrete expectations and it all goes so tragically wrong in the blink of an eye. This was at the private school in my town. I went to the public school. This guy had a video of his girlfriend in the shower. I don't know if they broke up and it was revenge or if they were still together at the time, but he shared the video around a bit and then the whole school either had a copy or had seen it and it made its way around my school too. The police got involved because she was underage and he was threatened with charges of distributing child prawn and the only reason the charges didn't stick was because they would have had to charge her too. Even if she only intended for him to see it, having sexualized naked video footage of a minor is child prawn, even if you're the child and you filmed it yourself. The police did talks at our schools about sending naked pics and videos, sexting, etc. The school also notified all parents and advised them to monitor the content of their kids' phones, and most people deleted it pretty quick after we were informed at assembly that it was considered child prawn and was illegal. But people had already seen the footage and the girl was being bullied mercilessly, not just because of the fact she was in a widespread naked video, but because she had quite a bit of ungroomed pubic hair. People kept offering her razors and some nasty girls bought a bunch of wax strips to their school and stuck some on her locker and bag and would try to stick them to her without her noticing. Anyway, a week or so later and we weren't hearing much about it anymore from our school. And then one afternoon, we had an impromptu assembly and got the whole don't make or keep naked videos of yourself or other students on your phones talk again. Some people knew already, but some of us were super confused. It turns out that the girl had made another video of herself showering and sent it to a bunch of people herself this time, except in the new video, she was completely shaved. A somewhat more lighthearted one, we had a kid I'll call Dan who was incredibly popular because he played football came from a wealthy-ish family, and had a whole bunch of girlfriends. He was quite stereotypically a straight kid who liked manly things and was academically gifted, but was never a bully. He was popular because of a combination of these things. When we came back from summer holidays in year 10, Dan had totally changed. He had long emo hair, eyeliner, slouched when he walked, listened to metal, gave up football, came out as bisexual, and dated another male student. Nobody could quite decide what to make of it, and because we were teens, it made our class uncomfortable. So sadly, for about six months, Dan was pretty much a non-person. Then, one day, something just gave, and we realized Dan was still the person he was before, and we were the ones being a-holes. He never quite became the popular kid again, but everyone at school went back to liking him, and he had a large social circle. He stayed at our school right through sixth form and graduated with excellent marks. I have no idea what happened to him after school, and looking back, such a sudden personality shift should maybe have rung some alarm bells, but I do think about him from time to time. I was an unpopular, bullied kid, but he was never mean to me. And here I was thinking that the emo phase was just a myth created by early 2000s pop punk bands. Dan went from jock to emo faster than my chemical romance broke up. But hey, whatever happened to Dan... I hope he's somewhere out there, still rocking his emo style, and probably debating over the best Fall Out Boy album because, let's face it, it's from under the cork tree. No debate necessary. She called the exchange student a peasant. This was 10 years ago when I was in year 12, and for some reason we had a bunch of exchange students in the midst of everyone dating, partying, and God knows what else. I wouldn't know. I was doing work. Anyway, 
The popular girls were a group of maybe 10 girls that were human rakes, with platinum or chocolate dyed hair, and a fascination with designer brands. They all had cars too because I remember them driving past me at a bus stop screaming at me to die. So basically this hot Swiss girl shows up and the prettiest of the popular girls didn't like her having the attention of all the popular guys. Apparently one day this happened in community and family studies class. The popular girl in question shows up on a Monday and no one is talking to her or sitting next to her. So I asked someone what happened. On the prior weekend, they were having a house party and Kelsey, the popular girl, started texting people that she'd stolen her parents' credit card to buy a dress to wear for about $300, then showed up and had called the girl a peasant for not having a wardrobe of clothes to wear to their blowout party. There was rumors that she slept around for cash, did tricks, and that her friends were extorting her for cash. We graduated four months later and only a few people spoke to her and she was smashed at the formal. Most of them have gone off to work in real estate. I swam competitively through high school, but just wasn't quite good enough to continue in college. But to stay connected to aquatics, I became a lifeguard and swim instructor for our university pool and all their school and community events. Many of the swimmers and water polo players were lifeguards or instructors themselves on the off-season. Our head guard was the polo team's BMOC. He was a beast in the pool. He was cool, witty, handsome, the whole shebang. We'll call him Steve. Anyway, we get to work one morning and our big boss was out of his office, already a rare occurrence, and called us all together. I arrived a little late, so I only caught the end where he kept saying, no one talk about Steve in front of the guests, I don't even want to hear his name. Once we split to start the day, I was trying to find out what happened. Someone pulled out their phone and there he was. Steve's mugshot after being arrested for statutory grape. Turns out he had a part-time job as a high school coach and you can complete the picture. I've never seen someone disappear so fast. His name was removed from team rosters, media promotionals, his position as a guard vacated and refilled, etc, etc. It was a weird time. He got into legal trouble because he and his team embezzled and misused $250,000 from the student union. The university kicked him out, stopped paying the annual $2 million to the student union, withheld funds, although that was later overruled by the courts, and revoked the privileges granted to the student union. Earlier this year, they stated that they and the students have no affiliation to the student union after one year of negotiations. His team was still running the student union because they were re-elected. They bought votes by offering pancakes, waffles, and donuts for those who vote for their party and had street volunteers that would pressure students to vote for the party. It actually led to a law being passed in Ontario that prevented universities to force students to pay non-mandatory fees. The scandal was revealed by a student party called the Rhino Party back in December 2018. By January and February, heads started rolling and law and accounting firms started getting involved to figure out how much was spent. It was rumored the figure was anywhere from 100k to 900k. Ontario provincial lawmakers passed the law in the summer of 2018. Starting fall 2019, I had the choice of whether I wanted to pay axillary fees to support the student newspaper, NGOs that operated in the school, support the student union, etc. That provincial law was recently overturned by the courts this year, so starting next fall I am forced to pay fees associated with groups that I don't support. He went from being popular to being a school meme. There's actually a lot of bank statements available that showcase what they bought. Hey, wait! Before you go off chasing after your next internet rabbit hole, give that like button a quick little smack. And if you're feeling particularly adventurous today, why not dance with the subscribe button? Join our band of misfits here and let's share the laughter. Anyways, stay safe out there in that crazy world. Much love. Peace.